Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to Living a Dynamic Life. Before the break, we were talking with Mark Abadi about his book, Evolve. So Mark, back to the book. Yes. Um, please do tell me more because obviously I know it's been well received. I know you've got some brilliant testimonials. What's the main thing that, that maybe strikes a chord with you in relation to people coming back to you, you know, with, with testimonials on the book? How does that feel? It must be very satisfying. Yeah, you know, it's always very humbling when mm. people um, feel touched by something that you've done. And I think that's the, the, the biggest testimonials I get is people, I mean, people say the most magnificent things to me, like, you know, it's, it's really changed my life. I mean, that for me, that's the reason I did it. It's changed my life. That's all I want to hear. And why I think it's so special, the book, is that, as I say, it, it blends science with spirituality. And that has been my theme from the beginning, is bridging that gap. Because most people, it is a wide chasm. And I see that as the, the yin and the yang, the dance between the masculine and the feminine, the good and the bad, the freedom fighter and the terrorist, blending it together, seeing how each of them is the support of the other. That's the key. And that's, I think, what happens in the book is I am just myself and I'm just me in there and I share personal stories about myself, some that get me in trouble. I mean, you know, some family members don't like the, the stories, I, but that's just tough. I was being authentic and myself and I blend it all together and people feel that in the book. And what I do is I make it all simple. That doesn't mean that it's just simple the, the concepts aren't simple, but because of the way I've been taught by my teachers, which was metaphorical stories. It's all about stories. It's all about a metaphor means a, a, a passing over from. So metaphor means to carry over from. So if you offer a metaphor, you help to carry over the information from the complex equation, the science of it, into the reality for the person. And that's what I put in, and that's why I put cartoons in. Mm. I put cartoons in because I wanted people to, as they're reading a, a, you know, a complex thing, to suddenly turn over and see, oh, you know, and I'll digress off into a funny story about something. But it's always got the underpinning of authentic living. It's a key to balanced, authentic living. But that's the way we should all live. And I do know that we're all on our own personal journey anyway. So how long did it actually take you to write the book? When did you start? Yeah, I mean, people love that question. Mm. It's probably the first question people ask. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to answer it. I know all my life. Um, I probably wrote three versions and then deleted them. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, I stopped writing. There were pauses and I went on a, um, you know, a reconnaissance mission. I went, I went to Brazil, I went to America, where I travelled uh, to India and... and um, I suppose, how long it took me to write? I don't know, if I sat down, if I tried to club it all together, probably a year. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, for me, I'm not a writer. Mm. You know, my, my, I'm dyslexic. And even though I've got you know, degrees in psychology and other qualifications and what have you, and I had to do a lot of reading, I don't find reading easy. I find this easy. This is my forum. This know. is real. This is talking, isn't this it? This is so much fun. Absolutely. You know? We're just chatting and Absolutely. it's live. Yes. I mean, as soon as I'd finished my book, I was over it. Mm. It's like, it's great and it's fantastic, but I'm already on to the next thing. I'm already evolving. And that's the whole point of the, of the Evolve book. And of course, you know, how I, how I did the, the, this is the golden ratio mm. here, or Fibonacci sequence. Fibonacci, yeah. And I put that evolving through. And of course, you know, you notice the love yes. in, the, in, the, yes. in the title. That's why I've got the E the other way around. And I wanted to show this never-ending spiral coming through the person's heart and through the, you know, they're on a penny farthing bike, showing that old becomes new, showing the evolution of things, the sunrise, the sunset. Mm -hmm. Everything's in cycles, but ever-evolving cycles. And that's every day, isn't it? Yeah. Because what I tend to uh, share with a lot of people is that, you know, as human beings, we don't really like change. And um, I know certainly I spoke to a friend last night and he needs to make some changes in life. And he said, Mary, I don't have the courage to do mm. it. And I said, look, I'm here for you. 
but I cannot and I will not do it for anybody because that doesn't serve them. Yeah. You and I, as we discussed before, we're here to empower people. Yes. But that starts by empowering ourselves. And it doesn't mean that we've had an easy journey. It means we've had the courage to run with the gauntlet and say, OK, I might have some lumps and bumps and some yeah. scrapes on my knee and, you know, I could break a leg. But you know what? going to keep going. Yeah. Even when you really do come up against that brick wall and you just think, oh, for goodness sake. But I, I think for me, and obviously, as I said, you know, I've known you for quite a while. We're part of quite a big spiritual network across the country. And I feel very privileged within that because when we do hit those brick walls, we've got a boulder to get over. That support network is there, isn't it? How would you say to someone, you know, if, if they kind of felt that they were maybe a little bit disconnected, to maybe find someone who is going to bring that yeah. to them or, or a spiritual groups? Are the there internet. any answers? A the thousand internet. answers? I mean, you know, you say we have this network across the country. You've mentioned across the country a few times. Mm. It's across the world. It is. There's nothing yeah, it that is. separates us now. No. With the internet, with, with, you know, I mean, there's nothing that separated us anyway, but from an old practicality point, you're in a country with somebody, you could go and talk to them. Now with the internet, we could talk to anyone. It, it's global. There are Google Hangouts, there are, there are chats, there are conferences online, there are meetings online, there are meetups. There's so much out there. Surf the web. Mm -hmm. Go surfing. I mean, that's what it's all about. Discover for yourself. Go exploring. You, you said one thing, uh, people uh, uh, don't like change. And this brings me back to something we were talking about before about mm -hmm. the law of attraction. Yeah. People also want to be correct. Yeah. They want to be right. Mm. And this brings us back to fear. Now, courage comes from the French courage, the old French courage, which means heart. So courage is coming with heart. And people make the mistake is when somebody has a problem, they sympathize, which is agreeing to the pathetic nature of the situation. They sympathetic. And instead, if you encourage, give heart to, allow them space to unfold their own issue. You support them, fine, but don't try and take it off them to do it for them. Back to the point about fear. A lot of people are choosing their life choices because they're afraid. They're afraid of what happens if I don't, what happens if that, what happens if that, ooh, I better choose that. Now, remember we talked about the conscious mind is only 10%, the subconscious is 90%. Now, if you are afraid of something, it means that somewhere in you, you believe it's going to happen. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. And if somewhere in you, you believe it's going to happen, somewhere in you, you'll make it happen. So if you're choosing out of fear, you are almost authorizing, you're signing off on that potential occurring. So instead of choosing, I don't want another horrible boyfriend, or I don't want another horrible business partner, you say, I choose a beautiful boyfriend, or I choose a wonderful partner. I choose somebody who's integral. I don't want a lying so -so. scumbag. <laughs> I, I want, uh, you know, choose what you want. Mm -hmm. And the point is, choose from love. Choose your life from love. Do what brings you joy, not what avoids the pain. It's not about avoiding fear. It's about embracing truth. Truth is light. Truth is God, truth is Allah, truth is the one, truth is love. Most people are unaware that they are living in fear though, aren't they? Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I have a very dear friend and most of his motivation in most of the things he does every day is from guilt. Yes. You know, and he feels guilty for this, guilty for that, guilty for that. And of course it's in his behavior or patterns. And I know sometimes we can think, okay, what motivated me to do that? Which is back to mindfulness, which is back mm. to kind of meditation. Because when the mind's thinking, nah, 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 all day long, we need to take it back, take it back, take it back. So I would say maybe to, to the viewers out there that if you've done something today and you kind of thought, was that right? Was that wrong? Think about the gray areas. Because if we learn from hindsight, there's nobody on the planet who's not done anything wrong. I've done stuff wrong. But when we learn from that, and sometimes I think when we have a situation, we have a dilemma, how do we feel about it mentally, spiritually, physically, and emotionally? And that's obviously what you put in the book. Yeah. But to break that down and look at what motivated me 
<coughs> to do that. And obviously our motivation today is altruism. Yeah. Because we've had those light bulb moments. Hopefully we're going to get some more. Well, hold on, hold but on. But it's about sharing. Uh, uh, altruism, no. Okay. I'm not here. I'm not here because of altruism. I'm here because it brings me joy to free my fellow beings, to offer an enchantment so that they can be joyful and free inside their own power. It brings me joy. That's why I'm doing it. That's why I do it. Yeah. Is that not altruism? No. It's really? totally selfish. I'm completely selfish. I'm doing it because I like it. It brings me joy. I would help someone on the street who needs help, not because I'm altruistic, but because it makes me feel warm inside to do it. Mm. It's like the, the burning building. Would you run into a burning building to save a baby? I go around the world looking for burning buildings to run into to save children. Because I think, how good would that feel to save a child's life, save anyone's life? Mm. I would love that opportunity just be for totally selfish reasons. And that's the point. We do everything for selfish things. The key is to be able to be so tuned in that you get joy from other people's joy. I'm not talking about being a horrible you know, individual that never does anything for anyone else because there's no love in that. If you can tap into other people's joy, then doing something for them, even if it's no obvious benefit from you, will make you feel good. And that's the benefit. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, within my work, the testimonials I've got from my book, it's just about putting somebody back on the pedestal. We all come off the railway tracks, the perch, call it what you will, and just allowing somebody to stand in their own space and empowering them to find the courage again. Because every now and again, we feel that we've maybe lost it. And one of the great spiritual sayings is that when the student's being tested, the master is quiet. And how do you feel that within your work, within your meditations, because I know that a few friends have experienced them and found them very powerful. So we discussed before about your meditations. How can your meditations help people to find courage, to find their way back to where they want to go, even if they don't even know they've fallen off the yes. railway tracks, just to support them while they're on that? Tell me more. Well, first off, I don't think you can fall off. You can't escape destiny. You can't not be you. And um, you're, you're doing your best. And this brings us, actually circles us back to guilt. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I, in the meditations I do, I, I run through different themes just to keep people entertained. So I have about 30 different themes. One of them is guilt. And what I say about guilt is, guilt is the idea that you could have or should have done something better or you should have known something different, yeah? So I was in a situation, something bad happened, and I go, oh, no, I should have known better. Okay, let's explore that. In that situation, did you try your best? Absolutely. For most people, and we only have the tools in the kit at the time, and we have a choice to learn from that, because we've all got hindsight. Right. Did Hitler try his best? H he thought he was right. Did he try his best? Absolutely. Of course he did. Yeah. In fact, the most horrific people, down to the most saintly people, they all try the best with the tools they've got. And they didn't choose those tools. They were brought up in a particular situation with a particular genetic code, and those two things created them. Now, back to the point, when something happens and it goes all wrong, it goes pear-shaped, we say in England, when it goes wrong, you have a choice. You can look at that and go, I should have done better. But actually, you didn't, in the situation, go, right, what are the options here? Okay, there's the best option and the, the worst option. I'm going to take that worst one. You never thought that. You thought, what's the best, given all the stuff I know and the situation? What's the best scenario here? And you chose what you thought was best. And you go down that road, oh, God, now everyone's dead. Oh, dear. Right? Okay, it's a, it's, it's a shame. And normally saying that's a good thing, but you tried your best. So actually, guilt is an illusion. There is no such thing as guilt. It, it's a fantasy we make up. Sure, learn from the situation that happened and apply it next time. Be mindful of it. But don't beat yourself up. You tried your best. Everyone's trying their best. And that's the beauty. Everyone's unique. So nobody's been through that scenario before. Nothing is repeated in the universe. 
It's all magically different each moment. So the whole guilt thing, it's a control mechanism that humans make up to try and <coughs> control you, to try and oppress you, to try and make you discourage yourself, remove your heart and behave out of fear so that they can control you. There's no such thing as guilt. You are perfect. You are perfect right now, even with all the stuff that's happening. It's a perfection. Warts and all. Absolutely. Yeah. I love my warts. You know, I, I just feel that I'm happy in my own skin and I don't want to be perfect. And what I find is that I am sorry, it's tough luck. You already I are perfect. Well, exactly, that's what I'm you saying. You are, I'm sorry. But you know, the, the, the beautiful thing is in my imperfections, I have my perfections. And it's taken me a long time to come to accept me for who I am. Mm. And I've had to bang across the walls of the goldfish bowl several times before I've got there. So how have you come to accept yourself on your journey? Well... You know what, for each person's journey is different, of course. Um, for me, uh, being a, a, an extroverted, double Leo, quite intelligent, you know, able to articulate, I've never really had a difficulty thinking I'm great. For me, the difficulty was the humbleness, actually realizing that I'm nothing. That was my journey. And that was painful and divine. It unfolded something in me something you see when you blend the when you take everyone's got a natural instinct to be a certain way a, a, a characteristic if you like and this comes down to the astrology i did at uh, the group we were at the mayan astrology mm -hmm. where it shows you who you are and who's your opposite in the same sense you have an, a, a a nemesis part of your character has a nemesis to it certain things for you will come easy and other things will be really difficult and for other people it would be the reverse and up here and all different the key to your freedom is to embrace the thing that's most not you mm. that's most alien from you if you can sit in the presence and acceptance of that thing that's most opposite to your opinion then you cease to be lopsided because here's one opinion this is yours and here's someone else's and you're just here like this fighting your battle it's my opinion it's my opinion if you can for a moment just accept the possibility of that opinion you cease to be at the fingertips fighting and you become into the heart where you can be both perspectives and that doesn't mean you know that you'll change your opinion chopping wood before enlightenment chopping wood after you'll still have your opinion but now you'll understand. And because you understand it, you'll be able to rotate yours so that that one better understands you. Because look, what's the point of life, surely? The only point is to communicate our opinion. Everyone's got an opinion. Mm -hmm. Everyone's got an opinion of mm -hmm. how it should be run, how it should be done, how it shouldn't be done. And why do we talk? Why do we say anything? Why, why have we got a TV channel? Because we want to share something with somebody. Now, if you understand how that works, if you understand their opinion, in other words, if you feel it, you can then rotate your opinion so that they can digest it more easily. This isn't a manipulation. This is learning to speak their language. I mean, this, this, this channel's going out to many different countries and there'll be a translation underneath my head here, probably in Arabic and who knows what other mm. languages. What we're talking about is the translation of, if you like, the soul, the language of the soul, or the language of the spirit. If you can accept that everyone has an opinion, and that whatever your opinion is, there will be an opposite to it. And if you can sit for a moment in that opposition, you free yourself from being a slave to your opinion. And you become more divine. Or you don't become more divine, you become more aware of the divine. Because you can't get any closer to God than you already are. You were born exactly as close to God as you will die. All it is is about awareness. God is everywhere, inside you, outside you, always has been, and will be forever. The difference comes when we awaken something 
our awareness of it. And we all have the ability to do that. Yeah. And for me, because I've always seen energies and because I, I've really felt that there are other realms beyond this one where there is such unconditional love yeah. between beings. And we're just we're coming to the to the break, so we've probably got a couple of minutes left. Yeah. But I think that's a very powerful note to finish on, that we do all have our own opinions. That yes. you're different, I'm different, you're male, I'm female. There's lots of differences in us, you yeah. know. But does it matter? We're still compatible. We still share. We, you know, are evolving every single day. And the viewers out there are evolving every single yes, day. And that's the beauty. And that's the beauty. And yeah. it is a beauty. And I think that when we wake up in the morning with that feeling of beauty, with that feeling of grace, with that feeling of, wow, what can I make better today for myself, for the people around me? How can I inspire people? For you and I, we empower mm. people on a daily basis. I do that because I'm constantly looking and cleaning my own stuff and hopefully empowering myself. That doesn't mean I am powerful. That means I can be humble within that. That means I just stand within my own integrity. And that means that integrity is a big part of me. It is integral, which is my godliness mm. as I see it. And hopefully the viewers have realized that you stand in your godliness as much as you can within our limits as, as human beings but we are perfect as we are so just to close mark do you have a website for the viewers yeah, out there yeah uh bookevolve.com will get you to me or if you um if you know how to spell my surname abadi um it's markabadi.com um hopefully you'll put a little strap line to, to see that but bookevolve.com or markabadi.com uh, you can find me. I, I'm pretty. I'm pretty online. I have a, quite a big uh, YouTube presence as well. I record. Um, people ask me questions. They send me questions on emails, and I record answers and put them on in one or two minute little segments called Mark's Moments. Wonderful. So, so thank you, Mark. It's been you. an absolute pleasure, and hopefully, and I know that I'll see you soon. Yes. Anyway, so I really hope you, the viewers, have enjoyed living a dynamic life. I hope you've gathered something from today. I hope that maybe it's made you look at maybe your integrity, maybe you're inspired to read the book, maybe you've just enjoyed listening, does it matter? But hopefully I'll see you next week on Living a Dynamic Life. I'm Miriam Louise Curtis. If you require any further information, the email address is info at umarchannel.tv. I hope you've enjoyed watching. Thank you.